This is the Motorola Moto G52 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the trim needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Now the back housing can be slightly lifted up and then the fingerprint scanner flex cable can be disconnected from the main board. The back housing is also made of plastic. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. The NFC antenna is located on the top center and there are numerous antenna flex cables around the border on the other side. Now the graphite film which is covering a portion of the motherboard, battery and this graphite film covering the front facing camera connector need to be peeled off. The graphite film helps transfer heat. Once we have access to the battery cable, we need to disconnect that first. Now that the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the board that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. And then the front facing camera cable can be disconnected and removed. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. Also, none of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top, copper tape over the front shields, and the liquid damage indicator on the bottom corner. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, as well as the proximity sensor and the two other camera connectors. There's more copper tape on the back shields as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape has been peeled off, we can see a thermal pad on top of the RAM and some thermal paste on the processor. Here's a better look at the RAM and processor with the thermal pad and thermal paste removed. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There's some more graphite film on the speaker assembly. And here's a better look at the speaker itself. This flex cable as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. There's the rubber gasket around the charger port as well as the headphone jack. The primary microphone is located in the center underneath the shield. And here's a look at the other side. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate and then the screws in the back housing. At that point, you disconnect the battery cable and pry off the battery, giving you access to the screen cable, which is routed through an opening in the midframe. And then you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe and reassemble the phone. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom, and that's held on with some adhesive. There's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the microphone openings on top and bottom. There's another liquid damage indicator by the charger port, and one by the SIM reader. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located on this side. And the repeat speaker is located on top, and that's also held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score, I give this one a 5.5 out of 10. 
Now it's time to put the foam back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.